Cash value life insurance is better than a 401k. You'll make more money and you won't have to pay taxes on withdrawals. But is this actually true? Well, influencers on YouTube and TikTok aggressively promoting cash value life insurance or IULs as a little known investment vehicle seem to think so. But here's the thing. They're not telling you the whole story. In this video, Brian and I are addressing influencer claims that IULs are better than 401ks. We're going to break down the often overlooked fees associated with these policies, restrictions, and withdrawal rules. And so by the end of this video, you're going to be able to separate IUL reality from influencer rhetoric so that you can make best informed decision for where you save for retirement. Brian, it's a real problem because these influencers not only tout the benefits of IULs, but they downplay or gloss over the important details that make cash value life insurance a risky bet compared to 401ks, yeah. especially when you look at historical returns and run actual policy illustrations. The data tells a totally different story. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like they have a list of pain points of a 401k right. and focus on that to sell the benefits of an IUL. That's exactly what they're doing. So Brian, before we jump in and compare IULs to 401ks, I want to know your thoughts on some of the misleading narratives that are commonly pushed uh, by these influencers and get your feedback, because I think it's important that people, people start to pick up on these narratives. Yeah, definitely. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So the first one is you'll get higher returns with IULs than you do in the stock market over time. What do you say to that? <laughs> First of all, this is simply not true when you account for fees and expenses. Okay. Cash value returns generally track the bond market performance over time, which has historically lagged stock market gains in the United States. Uh -huh. I'm going to show you fees. I'm going to show you expenses and historical returns in an actual illustration in just a minute, because most of these influencers don't show it. Or they don't know it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's another thing. All right. So another thing that I hear is that IULs are really an investment. What do you say to that? Uh, the insurance companies would love to hear that. First of all, IULs are an insurance product, which is a savings vehicle, not an, not investment. an investment. Exactly. Premiums are permanently lost if you surrender that policy early. High commissions make it a poor savings choice in most cases versus low cost index funds. And with IULs, insurance brokers and companies aren't even allowed to say it's an investment unless it's a variable universal life policy. But that's not what we're talking about here today. So anyone that you see online that's touting it as an investment is not a licensed advisor? Um, very well could not be. Okay. If they are in every one of them um, videos that they're doing, uh -huh. they are supposed to show the disclosures at the bottom. So I Got haven't it. seen them. So are they licensed? We're not sure. Okay. All Good right, question so to ask them though. There, there you go. <laughs> Great idea. All right. So one last narrative that I see a lot of is that IULs beat the employer match with 401ks. <laughs> this one's hilarious. Okay. 100% match for free can be the most powerful way to grow your retirement savings behind compound interest. Sure. I have not seen a policy that can match free money that your employer kicks in. All right. Well, let's do that side-by-side -side comparison between a 401k and an IUL. Okay. Let's say today you're a 35-year-old male and you have an annual income around $50,000. You contribute 3% of your pay, which is like $1,500 annual or $125 a month to your 401k. The employer matches 100% of that first 3%, okay? The rate of return inside the 401k, let's just say it's minimal. Let's just say it's 6%. Inside your 401k after 20 years, you will have $111,158.56. After 30 years, you'll have $238,610.43. That doesn't include any pay raises, any bonuses, mm -hmm. or anything else. That illustration assumes that you stay at the same pay level at the whole time. Now let's break down an IUL illustration to compare. Okay. My client wants to invest the same amount of money, $125 a month, same as what the 401k contribution was minus the match. Sure. So it's the same dollar amount from the 401k example, which is what these influencers tell you to do. Stop contributing to your 401k and contribute the same amount to an IUL. So that's what we're going to do here. 
Okay. With that same IUL, after 20 years, you're going to have $44,116 at the illustrated 7%. 7%. After 30 years, $96,066 at that same 7%. That's a big difference, even with a higher rate of return on the IUL. Yes. I'm going to pop up the IUL illustration where I pull these projected numbers from. If you're looking at the highlighted area, you're going to see a 7% non-guaranteed projection and down further on line 20, year, which is year 20 of that policy, mm -hmm. you're going to see this worth $44,116 after paying $30,000 in premiums. And if you scroll down to line 30, it's $96,066 after paying $45,000 in premiums. So let me ask you a question. Does paying $45,000 to get $96,000 after 30 years sound like good returns to you? No, especially when you look at the average return in the stock market over the 30-year period. Exactly. One more thing on that illustration I just showed you. By law, insurance advisors have to show you this information. And guess what? You, the consumer, has to sign off on this before you actually buy this policy. Hmm. We talked about how these influencers keep touting that you'll get higher returns with IULs than you do the stock market over time. And you said that's not true when you take into account fees and expenses. Right. That's exactly what I said. Before we get to the fees, though... Let me show you the historical returns of the indexes inside this actual policy. Okay. okay. So as you can see, over the last 25 years, the S&P 500 index was 7.45%. And the global index was 7.61%. Now, I'm going to pop up a chart explaining some of the common fees inside these policies. In this illustration, we see the following. Premium expense charge. What this is, is a percentage of each premium payment that is deducted from that paid premium prior to adding them to the indices. In this case, Michelle, 4% in all years. Mm. So if you go back to that example, if you're making a $125 payment each month, that's $5, $5. per every payment going to that fee. And now that's for the non-guaranteed of the 7% illustrated in the example above. Right. Okay, so let's go to the, the next thing, which is the index account monthly charge. Depending on the index you choose, you'll also be charged 0.06% monthly or 72 basis points per year for choosing that index. Interesting. Now, let's look at the policy fees. Hmm. This fee is deducted monthly from your cash value, which is currently $10 per month. And next... How about a per unit charge? This is equal to the, your policy face amount or the amount of insurance that's going to be paid to your beneficiaries if you pass away prematurely. This fee is equal to your face amount divided by 1,000, then multiply by whatever their per unit charge is on the policy. So the per unit charge will vary from provider to provider. Yes. And it's also based on you. Okay. Your health rating, according to the health insurance company, your driving record, among other factors. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the monthly deduction. This is the monthly cost of insurance, which is what it costs to buy your life insurance policy and the per mm. unit charge and the policy fee of $10. So as you can see, Michelle, it's going to add up to a lot. Yeah. So anyone on TikTok harping on 401ks, having a lot of feeds, needs to start doing the math behind IUL fees. Yes, they do. One other thing that's touted is that with an IUL, you can withdraw tax-free compared to the 401k. This is oh, yeah. accurate. Yeah, you are correct. This is one of the major benefits of an IUL, and it usually starts after the 10th year of the policy, as you can see in this chart here. So it starts after a certain amount of time. It's not just after year five you can withdraw. Yeah, it and each one of these depends on the actual policy. So you got to read the fine print to see when that perfect year to withdraw starts okay. inside these IULs. Excellent. In this case, it's 10 years. They touted it as a tax-free withdrawal, but you have to do it as a loan. So you have to pay it back? No, but you will be charged interest if you don't wait until you get to the preferred rates inside that policy. 
Okay. So in this case of the example on the screen here, after the 10th year, you can borrow at 2% and then you're they're paying you 2% interest on that money. So you're effectively paying $0 back on the borrowed money. Brian, I saw a TikToker say that the average advisor doesn't know how to make these policies to benefit the consumer, meaning that they're not focused on building the largest amount of cash value first and the fact that they sell the largest face amount policies for the highest commission. Is this true? Yes, it is. Okay. And to show you what it looks like to focus on the consumer first, let's look at these actual policy details. Okay. Why on earth would a 35 year old buy a $41,000 face amount life insurance policy for $125 a month? We well, can hop online and buy a $500,000 term policy for $25 right. a month because this policy is designed to build the highest cash value for him. Lowest face amount, highest cash value. That's why I made sure that these examples were focused on the consumer getting the biggest bang for their buck out of this IUL policy. These are custom policies and must be designed to fit the needs of every consumer, but they can't be sold to every single person like right. they are being touted today. Got it. Yeah, they're not cookie cutter, are they? No, they are not. Well, this has been really eye-opening. Thank you so much for walking us through this. If you made it this far and you like the content of this video, hit the like button, help us grow this channel and leave us a comment. What do you think about IULs versus 401ks? What do you think about the content in this video? And also we're going to drop a link to the video that we did on why am I still funding my 401k? So if you're wondering that and looking for other options, which a lot of people are, go check that out. Again, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Definitely. All right, Brian, thank you so much for this. Appreciate it. And thanks to everyone who watched. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.